Good morning again, and uh, welcome to our Side by Side for this Holy Week journey that we are going to make together as we go with Jesus to the cross. That's my plan for the week. I want to begin in Luke chapter 19 today because that's where, as it were, the story begins in the record of Luke. Jesus is going from north to south, up from the area of Galilee, and he's heading out around through Jericho and then up to Jerusalem. And we're going to follow this journey. But when it comes to Jericho, let me read you just the account in Luke. He entered Jericho and was passing through. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was rich. And he was seeking to see who Jesus was, but on account of the crowd he could not, because he was small in stature. So he ran on ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was about to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, hurry and come down, for I must stay at your house today. So he hurried and came down and received him joyfully. And when they saw it, they all grumbled. He is gone to be the guest of of a man who is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor, and if I have defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. And Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, since he also is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. There are a number of things that we can observe and see and learn from this passage. And I just encourage you to take your own notebook and sit down and go through the passage again on your own. Walk this road with Jesus and see just how Amazing the things are that you and I can learn from this simple, straight, trying to grasp what's being said. First of all, notice that Jesus is passing through. He's also passing through for the last time. He will never return this way. He's on his way to the cross. He's on his way to the ascension, ultimately, to glory. And I find that quite a profound thing, just to think about time. The last time. Because there are many people in this world for whom Jesus will pass them by one final time. And I have no idea when that time is, but I certainly know it is a reality and something that everybody should be aware of. What the passage tells us about Zacchaeus, well, that he's a chief tax collector, he's very rich, he's small in stature, and he's seeking to see who Jesus was. Those are all very important things, and when we put them together, we get a picture of this man. I was reading a little note in a, in a, in a new devotional by David Gooding, the late David Gooding, and he talked about how his smallness and stature maybe created a sense of smallness in his nature that made him be the person he was, you know, small, but he was going to prove to everybody else that he was no small, insignificant person. Maybe that was what drove him on to become what he was. Certainly, he became very wealthy, and certainly, he became very unpopular. But what do we read? He ran ahead. He climbed the sycamore tree to see. At this point in time, we have no clue about about Zacchaeus having had any great sense of longing to get to know Jesus. Deeper than this, all it says, he wanted to see Jesus. He heard about him. He knew about him. And there would certainly be stories circulating about Jesus. And he might not get to the front of the crowd, but he wanted to get to see Jesus. I think there's something in this about sight. For just prior to this, we have the blind man who on the way into Jericho calls out to Jesus. And Jesus not only gives him his physical sight again, but he gives him spiritual sight And here we have this other man, a small man who can't see over the crowd. You know, I just put these things to you and say, is there something there that the Lord is trying to say to us? You know, the crowd clearly can stop people from seeing Jesus. And maybe the crowd that you're associated with is stopping you from seeing Jesus. Maybe that's something you need to get above. You need to really make an effort to get above that. 
or it could pull you down in a place that would be very, very sad. Then Jesus passes under. Nobody notices Zacchaeus. Why would they? Well, for all sorts of reasons. I mean, Zacchaeus is not high in their list of important people, if less, well, at least only important to be, you know, not to be, ple- not to be pleasant to. But Jesus stops. And I get this sense that everything stops just for a brief moment. You know, like the crowd goes quiet. How would Zacchaeus hear his name in the middle of those leaves rustling up there above him? Jesus brings everything to a silence. And then Zacchaeus hears his name being spoken by none other than the Lord himself. Imagine that. The very creator, the very creator of the universe speaks his name. And you know, the very creator of the universe speaks your name as well. He knows your name. He knows everything about you right now, where you are, your story. He knows the struggles, the trials. He knows your guilt that you feel. He knows the, your attempts to do things or failures. He knows everything. And then Jesus says, hurry, come down. Haste, urgency. You see, Jesus has an appointment to keep in Jerusalem, as we shall see how amazingly timed that appointment will be and we'll see that tomorrow but that's another story hurry and come down there is urgency jesus is passing there is urgency do not delay your name has been called this is your moment and then what do we read zacchaeus received jesus joyfully that word joyfully sums up everything doesn't it I mean, to receive a person joyfully gives an impression of what you think of that person and and that occasion. You wouldn't receive them joyfully if if you were not glad, if this was not a big moment in your life. Jesus is, is the one who offers freely what this man could never, ever get with all his extortion and everything else. But now, look, look, but what about the others? When they saw it, they all grumbled. That word grumble is just kind of an onomatopoeic word. I mean, it sums, it says what it sounds. It's just, you know, miserable people. You know, he has gone to be the guest of a man who is a sinner. But they didn't get it, did they? Here's all these people following Jesus who didn't get Jesus. Because Jesus at the end says, but the Son of Man came to seek and save the lost. They can't get that. Do we get that? We need to see that, that the, the, the Lord Jesus has come to seek and save the lost and he wants you and I to be part of that story. He sends us out not just to stroke people's heads and make them feel comfortable, but to bring the news of a saviour to them. And what's the effect of this then finally? Well, Zacchaeus makes restitution. What a, what a restitution. I mean, this is, this is no sort of small tokenism. Now Zacchaeus knew the truth about about what was required of those that God had laid down in the law. This restoring compensation for things like this. And he does exactly what he should and more. And he says, Behold, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I've defrauded anyone of anything, I restore it fourfold. Can you imagine what that the area around there that he was responsible for was like? Can you imagine the joy that spilled out of Zacchaeus's life into the whole community? Talk about community impact. If the gospel doesn't make community impact through the lives of of rescued souls, there's something wrong. There's something not right about it. No, what we have here are these wonderful pictures of the results of the work of Jesus. Jesus declares then that salvation has come to this house since he is a son of Abraham. Meaning what? Son of Abraham? Well, Abraham is made righteous because of his faith, not because of his deeds. It wasn't because of the giving away the the, the money that made Zacchaeus right. That was only an expression of what had already taken place in his heart. He welcomed Jesus, he acknowledged Jesus, he put his trust in Jesus, and then he became someone who really was a demonstration of the power of Jesus. It's all about the power of grace, isn't it? That's what changed him, the power of grace. And it's that same power of grace that changes you and I. Isn't this such an exciting story to begin the week with? Such a wonderful truth. Let it, med- let it become part of your thinking today and meditate upon the joy that's in that. And I pray that the joy that's in this truth found in this passage will fill your heart and fill mine as we go through this week joyful 
and sometimes sorrowful as we think of our Saviour. And we'll come back to this tomorrow. And God bless you today.